Welcome back to Bumblebee. Here are the top 10 most pivotal scientific discoveries in history. Starting our list off at number 10, microwave. I can't say microwave anymore. I have to say microwave because of this video. Milk, full fat, which I've warmed in the microwave. Thanks to this first invention on our list today, I can eat Hot Pockets anytime I want. Not all inventions allow you to accomplish such a feat. Percy Spencer changed the science and snack game. He was originally an American engineer working for Raytheon, but Percy also loved a snack on the site. So he had a chocolate bar in his pocket one day. He was saving it for later, but when he walked in front of a magnetron, the chocolate bar in his pocket, well, it sadly melted. But luckily for us, after a few follow-up experiments in 1945, we now get microwave ovens. And it's always a good time. It wasn't until 1967, mind you, where microwaves were in our actual homes, because of course it took a little while to narrow down. But yeah, nowadays it's great. We almost forget we have one now. It's perfect. Number nine. Super glue. I feel like we're using super glue now more than ever in history. Activists are gluing themselves to tables, streets, you name it. But who do we have to thank for such a sticky substance? Back in 1942, inventor Dr. Harry Coover was working on plastic sites for weapons. Now, this was intended to help Allied forces during World War II, but while working on these clear plastic sites, he made super glue instead. Now, obviously, he was a little busy at the time, so he shelved this invention for nine years before returning back to the lab. Superglue didn't completely come out until 1958. It took 16 years to get to our shelves. And it's still there. We use superglue to fix everything, even the occasional social issue, it appears. Number eight, pacemaker. Here we go, this one's a tad more exciting than super glue, dare I say. A pacemaker, odds are you know somebody with one of these right now. It all started in 1956, when Wilson Greatbach was trying to record the rhythm of the heart. Not the song, the actual rhythm of the actual heart. That's the dumbest joke I've ever put in anything in my entire life. But after installing the wrong piece by mistake, he actually realized that the circuit was emitting these pulses, these heartbeat type pulses. So he thought, well, maybe I can create a device small enough for a body and actually stimulate an actual heartbeat. Cut to 1958, a dog was the first ever proud owner of one pacemaker. He's walking around, he's like, hey, life's rough. Number seven. Theory of evolution. Charles Darwin, we don't think of this man too often for obvious reasons, but he had some ideas that were out there, right? In his book, The Origin of Species, written back in 1859, he explained how humans were evolved from the animal kingdom. And as if that wasn't already a handful of news, he also claimed that the world was much, much older than what everybody thought. And around the 1930s, that crazy idea was then accepted into the scientific community officially. Imagine being the first person to be like, I think we came from animals. I don't think we're uh, aliens. I think we're actually, I think we're actually animals. That's a hot take, right? Number six, oxygen. Okay, speaking of hot takes, again, imagine being the first person to be like, what is this? What am I breathing right now? Why is this so good? What is oxygen? What is all this gas around us? Pretty hot take. That's a pretty bold thing to just dive into. Oxygen was identified for the first time scientifically by Joseph Priestley back in 1774. After he heated up red mercuric oxide, he found this colorless gas, and at first he called it deflogisticated air, which is, you know, it doesn't roll off the tongue per se. And Priestley shared his discovery with the French scientist Antoine Lavoisier. Lavoisier then connected these dots, and we learned that oxygen supports animal life. Life. And us too, we don't mind air. Air's pretty, that's pretty nice. Number five, not flat. Let's talk about the earth for a hot second, shall we? Any guesses as to what shape it is? I'll tell you one thing, it's certainly not flat. Definitely not a flat planet. We can hit that thumbs up for not a flat earth. We've known this since 1619, when Johann Kepler published the third law of planetary motion. Now this, this was a glorious day for the scientific community. This is when humans finally figured out that the Earth revolves around the sun and not the other way around. And also circular. That's also a great point to learn at the same time that it's not flat, for sure not flat, definitely a circle. If you're a flat earther, hit that thumbs up. We're learning today, you know? Number four. Velcro. All right, shout out to every guy out there with a Velcro wallet. Keep doing it, man. I still have mine from high school. I'll never abandon that thing ever in my life. It's still got, it's still got some stick left in them. Who must we thank for Velcro? 
I use Velcro every day. I use them on my rock climbing shoes so I don't fall off the wall. And it's all thanks to a Swiss engineer named George de Mestral. And back in 1941, he found these burrs clinging to his pants and his dog's fur. He went for a walk and then he was covered in all those spiky balls. That's the worst day, that happens so often. We've all been there, but we've certainly never been inspired like George was. The word Velcro is actually a combination of velvet and crochet. Now these artificial hooks that stick on your clothes, they were heavily used by NASA first in the 1960s, and then for us, of course, when we weren't ready to tie our shoes. Number three, the discovery of penicillin. Sometimes miracles happen when nobody's even in the room, right? It's like boiling water or something like that, you have to look away. A watched pot never boils. It certainly does though, you know? Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin back in 1928. Now at the time, he was actually studying Staphylococcus, bacteria that causes infections and boils and nasty stuff. But right before Alexander left for a two week vacation, he left a Petri dish with some of that Staphylococcus just on the lab table, rather than stored away in an incubator. Turns out everybody here needed alone time because during this off time, a penicillium mold spore just got the confidence to introduce itself to said bacteria. And now the, the room's temperature was also perfect. It was a lovely moment for everybody involved, plus the emptiness of the room allowed for the mold to finally fight back in peace and prevent that bacteria from growing furthermore. He discovered this antibacterial substance was only produced by strains of penicillium. Guy's like, all right, see you in two weeks. Comes back to a literal miracle. It's like, what? Number two, the Trinity test. Not all of these are Velcro and fun and games, okay? Some science discoveries suck. When Americans heard that Germans were developing nuclear weapons, they joined in with their development on a project, most of it being done in New Mexico. So in 1939, President Roosevelt got scientists, military officials, this whole team of brilliant individuals to figure out how to use uranium as a weapon. The government eventually started to fund said research, which was happening at Columbia University, and in 1942, engineers from the army joined in as well. And following Pearl Harbor, that's when President Roosevelt transitioned the project into a military branch officially, the Manhattan Project, made with the strict goal of weaponizing nuclear energy. There are facilities in New Mexico, Tennessee, Washington, even here in Canada, you name it. But come July 16th, 1945, the Trinity test was conducted. The first atomic weapon was detonated in a New Mexico desert and it was deemed a success, with mushroom clouds reaching as high as 40,000 feet. It was, uh, yeah, that was definitely life-changing, for sure. And finally, number one, Coca-Cola. All right, we'll finish on a nice sweet note. Let's do it. Every time it's the holiday season, I see nothing but Coca-Cola ads. I don't know how they do it. They've somehow tapped into the entire holiday season. But how does such a syrup come to be in the first place? We'll end on this one so we can all grab a drink immediately after the video ends. I got you, I know how to do this. Inventor and pharmacist John Pemberton originally set out to cure headaches, which is pretty ironic. Two main ingredients, of course, being coca leaves and cola nuts. Now, things were boring, dare I say, until his lab assistant accidentally mixed the two with carbonated water. And then, poof, it's a miracle. It's like they knew, it's like they were from the future and they're like, hey, Trust me, I got us. Over time, you throw in this top secret recipe, which we still don't know, and now we have a movie theater essential and one of my favorite soft drinks, Coca-Cola. Personally, actually, I'm lying. I'm a Dr. Pepper guy, if anything. 23 flavors? How in the world do they get it in that little can? If we get a part two, I'll throw Dr. Pepper in. There you go. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. You're you. Subscribe to The Hive, and I'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Peace.